We've all been there. We need meat and there's just huge herds of beefalo stumbling around as meals on wheels. So then, do we do the usual and just lure the individuals away from the rest to then brutally murder them one by one with our own hands? Or do we just let nature take its course on occasion? Now either one works, and each have their own pros and cons, I suppose. But man, sometimes it's just a pain looking at and dealing with so much meaty temptation at once. Especially when time or big bads are just not on our side at the moment. So could there be a way to mass murder Beeflo when we want to by our own choice? Yes, yes there can be everyone. We've fire farmed bunnymen, burnt our porky companions, and have even roasted splew monkeys alive. So now, it's Beeflo season. Thing is, however, everything might seem a little unconventional at the end of the day. Cause for one thing, I am now going to start by recommending the use of the beefalo bell here, instead of the previous methods of maybe using grass twigs or even a salt lick to get beefs where we want them. But how does the bell replace any of those luring techniques beard? Well, by simply allowing us to simply click on a beeflo to get them to follow us immediately wherever we bloody want them to, no nonsense included. Seriously, the beeflo bell here has simply changed almost everything about moving beeflo to where we want them. So hurting them to their death is now as simple as it's ever been. Heck, we don't even need to put ourselves in danger to even run bigger groups of these farms anymore. I think it's still better just to go individual. It's easy, one click. Done. But before we dive headfirst on how the farms perform, I should remind you that you will be needing an ice fling omatic no matter which method you end up choosing. In order to, of course, potentially save any said farms from burning of themselves, as we're dealing with a lot of fire today. You'll understand more about what I mean about all this in a minute here though. So, let's get to building some of these farms, yes? And first up is the classic grass tough version of fire farms, which are usually the cheapest and arguably most efficient ones out there because of that. They're simple, you just grab some extra tufts and plant them side by side as such. Now, layouts are always gonna depend on what you're farming, where you're doing it, who's building it, etc. However, I implore you to lean more on the smaller side of things, as no matter what, beefalo fire farms with tufts are gonna have an extra layer of involvement. And what I mean by that is this. Beeflo are beefy. No, seriously. They have 1,000 health overall, which is far more than the typical mobs that we choose to fire farm. Thus, the typical timings of a fire farm overall change when dealing with beefs. So this leads to us having to essentially run the farm twice, back to back, in order to complete it. Otherwise, all the grass tufts, oh, and potentially your doors, are just going to burn up before the beeflo even get close to dying. That, or just the emergency mode of the flingomatic is going to activate before anything gets done. And you're still going to be losing parts of your farm anyways. So hear me out, everyone. Yes, you're gonna be starting these farms how you normally start fire farms, by setting whatever kindling on fire that you don't mind losing, which for me is typically charcoal. But if you wait for said kindling to turn to ash, which should happen when the beefs are around half health and below, you then turn on the flingo as you normally would to end the farm, and do that rather quickly, mind you. Wait for things to calm, which shouldn't take long. Turn off the flingomatic, unlike this bearded idiot, and then repeat for a second time. Got it? Good. But don't worry if this is a little too much for you, as this is not our only option. No, no, no. Time to share some industry secrets here. Like mini signs. Mini signs are a potential fire farm candidate for one reason and one reason alone. They can be placed on top of one another. Now they've always been a structure with tight placement mechanics, but we can take it to the extreme in this case by literally making one spot hold as many mini signs as we bloody want. Careful now though, it becomes really easy to use way, way too many of them, and that becomes a problem fast. It's why I typically don't advise that you use these things. But three to five signs in one spot with a few rows deep and a couple columns is probably okay and likely all that anybody can handle to begin with. But here's the deal, and it's why people even consider using mini signs. As mini signs are amazing at producing high fire tick damage when stacked because each sign is on fire separately essentially. 
But the problem again is a beefalo's high health. So when many signs are absolutely going to destroy pigmen, bunnymen, you name it, in seconds, the beefalo are going to last a bit longer. And that means a loss of signs per attempt for sure. No questions asked. It's not that hard to make and place more mini signs, but maybe, just maybe, there's another option that can combine both of these methods we've talked about and just even things out. And allow me to rope you into it. No, I'm not kidding. Replacing grass tufts or mini signs with rope could actually solve all our beeflow fire farm woes at once. Why? Well, two reasons. So take notes. Rope has one of the longest burn times in Don't Starve history, and since we can pile it together without stacking it, which by the way, is a very important detail to note, we benefit from not having to worry about repeating steps to complete the farm in more than one go, and we produce a high fire damage tick rate similar to the mini sign method. In short, they burn longer, so you're not going to lose them, and you can just use as many as you want to put them all on fire separately for more and more tick damage. Yup, simple as that. That said, you don't actually have to default the rope, cause would you believe it everyone? Unplanted grass tufts actually last just as long as rope does when burning on the ground. Or, you know, give or take a few seconds. So all I'm saying is maybe if you just adjust that first farm we did, you might have the best one around. Honestly folks, the choice is yours even if you decide to do any of this at the end of the day, as this video was more of a proof of concept than anything. So play around with it, make your own farms, enjoy it, and then just munch away at the end. Oh, and yeah, the downside is that your desired loot is going to be among all the other loose crap in these pens, but I think it's still going to be worth it. And there you have it, everyone. Again, just a video meant really just to say, yes, we can fire farm beefalo. So now it's going to be up to you to decide how to do it, when to do it, and if you even bloody want to do it. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Where's the beef? And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.